people raise the question, why would a parent ever send a child along to a foreign country? The Cuban Revolution sparked panic in the hearts of many Cubans, prompting the separation of 14,000 children from their parents. After Fidel Castro came to power, many parents sought to send their children to the United States for a better life. In an attempt to fulfill the wishes of these parents, the Catholic Church and the CIA came together to create the Pedro Pan Operation in December of 1960. Although the Pedro Pan Operation tragically tore apart many Cuban families forever, it also triumphantly sent children into the U.S. with a better life than they could have ever received in Cuba. The Castro regime was, uh, was going to take over the lives of children. And uh, my parents, uh, which was a big sacrifice now that I'm older, of having their kids leave the country, leave the, their, their home, so they can protect the future lives uh, because otherwise the government would have taken over all the decisions of the children. The Pedro Pan operation was ultimately a result of the Cuban Revolution. Rumors of abduction and Castro's literacy campaign specifically prompted many parents to participate in this project. Now there are about uh, two million people of Cuban origin um, and uh, the exodus continues. So the main reason, I think, was the, um, the series of changes, uh, economic, political, social changes that took place after 1955-59 with the uh, triumph of the Cuban Revolution and the uh, arrival to power of Fidel Castro. Before the Castro regime, the literacy rates of Cuba were extremely low, so Castro decided to create a program to teach children how to read. However, this was widely seen as a means of communist indoctrination to many Cuban parents. In his speech to the Cuban people on August 17, 1961, Castro said, We shall terminate the school year and mobilize all the students from 6th grade up. We shall organize any army of teachers and send them to every corner of the country. True fear rose in Cuba when rumors spread by the CIA flooded the country. People were hearing that the government was going to abduct the children of families that did not politically coincide with the ideas of the revolution. Without any proof of this rumor, parents still decided to act in accordance to it due to extreme panic and an instinctual sense to protect their children. I think that I would have stayed uh, obviously in Cuba and I would have been a subject of the Castro dictatorship. And um, I mean, I would have been doing whatever they asked me to do, whatever they told me to do, because they, never, they don't ask questions, they just tell you. Uh, there are people there in Cuba who um, are told currently who are told, you know, what the profession is going to be, what school they're going to go to. So I would have been the subject of that. Operation Pedro Pan was born from this panic. The CIA and Catholic Church put together the operation as an alliance in the United States against communism. The children were selected primarily from the upper class of Cuba, with a minority of people from the lower class toward the end of the operation. The two men that made the operation possible from the beginning were Brian O. Walsh and James Baker. The State Department notified the airlines that they were to accept visa waivers of the Catholic Welfare Bureau. A simple letter stating that someone whose name and birthday was on this signed by me. I was never aware of the CIA being involved in this in any way. Uh, I saw it entirely. Of course, I knew our government was uh, very supportive. Cooperated. I remember when I I got the first permit after they started this system for visa waivers. I got the first permit for us to bring in 500. Well, after we brought in 400 or so, I had to get some more, and I went down to talk to the man about it. And he said, "What are you going to do? Bring out all the Cubans?" And of course, at that time, we had no idea it would be yes, it would be 14,000. Uh, so we got children almost every day. Uh, during that period of time. About a week or 10 days later, I got a telephone call from Washington. 
and Voorhees was on the phone again and said, do you think you can come to Washington? I said, well, sure. See, Cuba was home to me, and I expected to spend the rest of my life there. In fact, I said at the time I left in January of 61, I was a Cuban-American who was leaving home also. The Pedro Pan operation was a stifling success for many children, allowing them to obtain jobs of high stature in the United States and provide a better income for their parents back in Cuba. However, many people have experienced long-term trauma from the fact that they were never able to reunite with their parents. I was, again, very young. I was expecting to see my parents very quickly. It didn't happen for a long time, and I didn't know that at the time. Florida International University warns that serious research has yet to be done on Pedro Pans and that it's likely that more than a few were so traumatized by the ordeal that it ruined their lives. The successful ones get the public's attention, while the troubled ones may not talk at all. Although the triumphs of this operation are significant, many people suffered for the rest of their lives due to mental scars. Antonio Devin was a Pedro Pan child. The experience of being a Pedro Pan was positively life-changing for Antonio Devin in many ways. I did um, learn many things uh, about, you know, myself and about um, people in general. It wasn't a terrible experience. Um, as many people may say, it was a life-learning experience. However, there were parts of the Pedro Pan journey that were an adversity for Devin. In all, in all, in all the things, uh, I was hoping to see my parents again and it, the time was going on and on and on and I never saw them, so it was very sad. I didn't know, you felt that you were abandoned and, and then you, you felt loved. The United States answer to what Adlai Stevenson termed Soviet blackmail in Cuba was a quarantine of all offensive weapons being shipped from Russia to that island fortress. The U.S. threw up a steel fence prepared to stop any vessel carrying materials of war. The Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 placed high tensions between the United States and Cuba for years after the event was resolved. This occurrence is what ultimately ended the Pedro Pan operation due to the U.S.'s decision to stop flights to and from Cuba. From the start to the finish of this mission, children were constantly faced with happiness and sorrow at the same time. The Pedro Pan operation succeeded in being one of the biggest flows of migration in the history of the United States. This state of the Cuban government prompted many people to chase their dreams elsewhere. Some trips were epic success stories, and some were catastrophic failures. Thank you.